Today, we're going to be going over everything we know so far about the brand new KVK March of the Ages. What's going on, guys? Cheers. I've been getting a lot of comments about you guys saying I drink too much soda, so don't worry. This entire thing, all vodka. I mean, uh, what this water. It's just, it's all water. Okay, don't worry. We're healthy around here. Anyway, a Season of Conquest, March of the Ages, has been the most unique and different experience for any KVK that I've ever seen Lilith release before into Rise of Kingdoms. So today, we're going to be going over sort of the basics and everything that I understand. And first of all, I could not be making this video if it wasn't for the members of my alliance. So huge shout out to RK, Rin, Miss Mayhem, everybody, all the r 4 and really even everybody in the alliance for just being as patient as possible and following orders and trying to learn this new kvk on the fly this is the first time that this kvk is open and we're all learning and we're all learning together and sometimes that can be frustrating but again i just wanted to shout out Wu tilla clan baby couldn't do it without you guys so thank you okay so a lot is different in march of the ages and you can even see this orange arrow line coming out of my city that's a change as well so we've got a lot to cover but i want to make this video this is sort of just like if you've never done march of the ages before this is a video for you okay we're not going to be talking about like war strategy we're not going to be showing any sort of crazy pass rallies or anything like that this is just like understanding this kvk because again it, it's very different it is very different now the first thing i want to cover is your forward camps this is going to be a big part of march of the ages if you go into the kvk screen you can see in the top right corner you now have a building management display here and you can see i've got two forward camps so far when you start the kvk you can have up to three forward camps and then of course as you push the different chronicles then you're going to unlock a fourth and fifth camp so let's go Go ahead and take a look at one of my forward camps you can see it on the map it's right here when you go to build a forward camp you actually have the opportunity to name it so if i go ahead and click here you can go ahead and build it it costs 10,000 crystals and 200,000 gold so that's honestly a pretty steep cost for these things uh however it does take four hours for you to to build a forward camp yeah dude four hours can you believe that shit and just like with your city you can only place these on alliance territory or coalition territory so you might be thinking omni what is the point of a forward camp a forward camp is essentially an extension of your own city and the reason that's important in this kvk is because you cannot use any teleport items at all i cannot use a territorial teleport it doesn't matter where it goes i'm not gonna be able to use it it says you cannot use teleport items in your current kvk you can't random teleport you can't use any teleports at all so your city is not going to move except in one specific scenario and we're going to talk about that in a little bit okay so you have forward camps and your forward camps are going to be where you're stationing your armies and your troops now the reason that this is important and as you can imagine if you can't move your city you're going to need a place to put your troops right but the other reason that this is important is because if you zoom out and you take a look at the map you're going to see gigantic circles on the map okay you can see here this is where my city is located there's a large green circle circle around it followed by a yellow circle around that and of course where my two forward camps are you see these same exact radius as well and this radius is absolutely crucial it's super important okay so the amount of damage that your troops deal within the green circles is 100 so fighting inside a green circle is just how you would expect your armies to go if you're fighting in the yellow circle so sort of on the outer edges of that radius you deal 75 percent damage right so essentially you get a 25 percent damage dealt reduction to your armies if you're fighting anywhere else on the map anywhere else outside of those circles you have a 90 percent damage dealt reduction you are only dealing 10 percent of your possible damage you're basically fighting with wet noodles on the open field you're not doing anything okay you, you don't have a shotgun you have a pea shooter okay you got a potato cannon you're not doing any damage over here anywhere on the map that isn't in your radius so it is absolutely crucial that you are fighting within these circles that are on the map and the only way that you can be doing so is by building your forward camps closer to areas where there's going to be rallies happening fights happening things like that now another super important aspect of these circles on the map is that you cannot join a rally or reinforce a garrison if the target isn't within your radius so either the radius of your city 
or your camp or anything like that now i mentioned before that it is actually possible to teleport your city and that is done with the foundation stones you see here on the map now a foundation stone can be built only within the radius of a ancient pagoda which you will see within the starting zone of your kvk there's going to be multiple there as you can see this is classified as a level two holy site it is a stronghold and this is something that you will have to rally with your alliance now you can see the amount of territory that is given to you upon actually taking that pagoda is very significant this is a large amount of territory that is granted to you you can see here this is the size of a regular flag right so the amount of territory you get is actually insane i mean that's that's a fort right there right and it's it's way larger than a fort so you get enough territory with a pagoda to have many members teleport in as long as of course everybody is teleporting in an organized way and you know you're teleporting on the borders and everything like that you can see here our alliance did pretty well on this left side over here you know there's i think there's some mountains over here and some things that were prevent yeah there's like water and stuff that was preventing some clean teleporting although we definitely could have done a little bit better for sure now when you're building your foundation stone it takes four hours in order to actually complete the building and you do have to send an army to the location of the foundation stone so it's not like you're building you know for example something in your city where you just you know spend some resources and then the building timer goes down no you actually have to send an army to your foundation stone in order to build it for four hours then once the foundation stone is built you can initiate your teleport from your city's current location to the location of the foundation stone and the teleport process also takes four hours that's right after the foundation stone is built you can't teleport there you have to wait the four hour period to teleport to that stone and because from start to finish it takes eight hours to teleport and move your city you can now understand the importance of the forward camps because this is mostly how you're going to be able to move forward across the map hence their actual name it takes longer to move your city than it does to build a forward camp and for example you can build three forward camps all at the same time all in different locations so think about the pagodas similar to like the obelisk in the ark of osiris right like that's the only place you can teleport same thing here on top of that only one teleport can be done every three days so not only is that eight hour an investment just to move your city you better be sure that that's where you want your city to be because it's going to take you three days in order to move it again now in that three-day period you can start to build your next foundation stone but it looks like you won't be able to teleport until that three-day timer is up since you can only teleport once every three days you're gonna be building your forward camps every four hours to make a slower progress across this map and guys this is actually a massive map I don't know if you can see really in the top right corner if you understand the scale of this map but this map is absolutely just huge it is huge compared to other kvk maps that we've seen before so this is a massive map and we're going to be making a slower progress over time so i'm not sure how the gameplay is going to go obviously we're still in the starting zone we're still learning we're still trying to figure out you know what's going to come next so you might be thinking okay so if your city is going to be far away right because you can only teleport once every three days and let's say you know this pass level four opens and we start to build more territory here we take the pass so how are you going to be able to supply your troops are you gonna to have to march all the way across this massive map over and over and over again the answer is no that is the other purpose of your forward camps not only are they going to be a place for you to send your troops to be garrisoned and stationed there but they're also going to be a place where you can heal your troops as well as well as also provide you with that uh, damage radius that comes with your territory so let's take a closer look inside one of our forward camps so you can get a better idea of exactly what this is doing when you first build your forward camp it's level one okay you take a look in here you can send one of your armies to that forward camp and it will march all the way there and it will be stationed at that forward camp you can unlock a second and a third garrison slot when you upgrade these forward camps okay so you can see here i can upgrade it the requirements for upgrading also costs crystals and gold and it also costs four hours of your life okay so when you upgraded the level of your forward camps you're going to get a couple of perks okay upgrading it the first time just increases the speed with which you can dispatch to that forward camp your reserve capacity goes up you also keep the same garrison queue with level three it goes up and with level five it goes up as well so you could have up to three armies in a fully upgraded garrison for your 
forward camp. Let's say I'm fighting in the open field here and I retreat back to my forward camp. All of the slightly wounded units that were in that army will then be healed immediately upon reaching my forward camp and the severely wounded units that were in that march will be sent immediately back to my hospital in my city so i can heal them again the way that you end up replenishing the severely wounded units in your forward camp is by dispatching a reserve to that forward camp so you don't have to have your army run all the way back to your city just to get the severely wounded from your hospital and then bring it all the way back no you can actually leave your army garrisoned in your forward camp and then actually send those units without a commander right you just send the units to that forward camp to replenish the amount of severely wounded that you lose during the fighting on the front line. It appears to be the case that the reserved troops that you have in your forward camp don't actually get consumed from your city's troops until they're actually replenishing an army. Now, even if you're a mega whale player, it doesn't mean that you can constantly just send endless reserves to these camps nonstop, right? Because then that would just mean a single player can sit there and win forever. Dispatching troops to your forward camps requires a marching order, which replenish every six hours. You can see that I just used a marching order in order to send my Cao Cao Minamoto to my camp here and you can see he's on his way and one thing that you must know is that i actually can't join any other forward camps i can't just like pop into these like you can with cities where you can jump around from city to city you know i, I know that was a strategy and is still a strategy and a great way to move around the map during battle time but in this case you cannot just join another forward camp it's it doesn't work in that way uh so you can see now in the management screen i do have my uh Cao Cao minamoto click the auto reinforce right so if i want all of my reserve troops to just immediately replenish this army automatically when it comes back it'll go ahead and do that um, however this is where the reserve management dispatch system lives so if i want to send 80,000 uh, tier 5 royal knights you can see the dispatch time here is 10 hours and four minutes that is absolutely insane but good news you can actually speed this dispatch speed up with the technology in this kvk yes you already knew it was going to be there you knew there was going to be kvk tech nobody wanted it but they put it back in because you know it is what it is i gotta say though they really did put these dispatch strategies all the way near the end of the technology so you can you know more than double the amount of speed with which you can reinforce these forward camps you can get 300 plus 350 percent it's actually crazy but the good news is that you can't do seven marshes anymore okay you can't have seven armies out in the open field like you could in previous kvks you're back down to five okay we're back down to five armies uh but you can actually speed up the speed with which you send troops to those armies out in the front lines of battle. So it's still gonna be a really nice advantage uh, to maxing out this technology unfortunately a lot of the technology is the same right you still have treaties and cultural exchange things like that you should be doing all of the bastion quests that you can every single day so you maximize the amount of crystals that you get and by focusing on the treaties technology obviously there's treaties one here and then there's also treaties two over here uh, so you want to focus on these get the most amount of crystals starting from the very beginning of kvk and then you also can do cultural exchange because you're going to want to you're going to do the bastions anyway right you want to get as much favor as possible from them let's Move over to one of the bastions that i've been working on here so this is a uh, by bars my boy okay my boy by bars you can see here uh there's pretty much the same quests that uh you normally would see here in the in the bastions however there's no more support skills right so I, by completing this i don't actually get any of by bars skills that i can use in the open field or attach it to a garrison or anything like that okay so there's no more support skills but you can see here that leveling up the bastion is still important uh, because you do get an increased crystal mine work speed so again you do want to do this every single day all of your dailies because and i do still have to do mine i know don't type the comment i know i have to still do mine okay but you want to do this every day because this is what's going to help you get maximum tech later in the kvk when you have those big fights if you haven't been doing this then you haven't had the crystals in, that you need to get the tech that you need to do the fighting okay now another thing that's missing from the technology is the kahar technology right and you'll say it's right here no it's not right here i know it's the same logo but this is actually the reserve expansion one this increases your reserve capacity by a certain percentage which is important uh but there's again no more kahar technology built in here at all so that is uh that's worth noting now kahar does still exist 
right? You can still use your bow and whistles, and you can still get your bow and whistles from your Bastion quests. Uh, defeating Kahar will still drop a chest, right? And you can collect that chest, but uh, it doesn't look like the rewards for Kahar change over time, right? Like, obviously, in other KVKs, you want to max out that Kahar tech and save all your bone whistles, and then once the Kahar tech was done, then you would use all the bone whistles at that point and get the maximum amount of rewards. Now, because there's no technology involved, you could just do the Kahars as you need to, you get that 30,000 uh, crystals and you're good to go. So I think I've covered pretty much everything, okay? The main difference with this KVK is that you can't move around wherever you want all the time. So you have to have a strategy and a game plan in advance and you gotta stick to it and you're going to be reinforcing your forward camps with uh, with troops over time and you're going to be fighting away from your city but within that radius at the start of the kvk i would recommend obviously you know once you've built some of your flags you're going to want to put your forward camps closer to th other things that you may need to rally right because again you can only join rallies if you are within that radius so as you can see here we have the ruined crusader fortress we're going to be rallying that at 2100 so i wanted to make sure that i had a a forward camp that was within that radius that way i could participate in that if it wasn't there i wouldn't be able to do it so you have to plan at least four hours in advance for these things right so make sure that you're following your alliance leaders and everybody is communicating as openly as possible i recommend discord but of course alliance mails work very very well make sure you read those i guess one last thing that i should mention is that obviously if you can only have a handful of forward camps what happens when you start to build like into king's land for example well the good news is you can actually demolish your forward camps you just click on the little management button and there's a little red x here and it will allow you to destroy that forward camp now keep in mind of course once you destroy it you can rebuild it and wherever you wherever you want to put it on your territory right but it does take four hours to build you do have to send another army there and it doesn't retain the upgrades right so if i upgrade for example if we go in here uh to my building management my forward camp two this is my second forward camp if i demolish this and build it somewhere else it doesn't look like it actually retains any of the upgrades that you've been doing okay so keep that in mind you don't want to just be going ahead and building them wherever demolishing upgrading demolishing it, it you, you want to plan this out okay it's like a game of chess you gotta you gotta be strategic about this when you're actually going to send reserves to your forward camps right you're sending the troops that i'm going to use to replenish my south march those reserves marching to my forward camp do not take up an army slot right you only have five army slots here obviously it doesn't actually take up one of those primarily because it doesn't have a commander associated it's just troops moving across the map to reinforce your forward camp so of course there's no troop there's no commander involved it does not take up anything here it's really going to play out just like they described it right essentially your alliance is going to build flags into a territory you're going to have your strong players establish a coordinated and organized group of forward camps you're going to send all your reserves there you're going to do all your fighting within those radiuses right at the front hopefully you win you build a couple of more flags you demolish your force and you build new ones and you slowly inch forward into territory and you kind of dominate in that way hopefully i've cleared some of these things up because i know that my kingdom and my alliance they've had a lot of questions about why can't I join a rally or, you know, where do I build my, my forward camp or what do I need the forward camp for? What are these green circles? Hopefully I have described and explained these things as best as I can. And, and if you found this video informative or useful or anything, drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton. It helps show it to other Rise of Kings players over on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're new around here, go down there, click that sub button, click the bell. If you want to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kings video, comment down below. If you have any tips or pointers or anything like that for March of the 8th, this is again a brand new kvk so if you have any little tips or tidbits of information that you think are crucial drop them in the comments section below and you're going to help not only me but everybody else who sees it so make sure you go ahead and do that as always my social media links are in the description make sure you follow me on instagram twitter facebook discord all that stuff it's always down there in the description as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and of course downloading with my link does support the channel for free and if you don't like it you can always uninstall it later but i think you will with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on me arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace